Hello, welcome back to Texas Cooking. Today we're going to make pizza dough. Now, pizza dough is really very simple. It is a simple combination of flour, water, yeast, salt, sugar, and a little bit of olive oil. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by placing water in my mixing bowl. Now if you do not have a mixer, you can do this by hand, but it takes just a little bit more work. And I really recommend getting one of these machines. They're well worth the money. Now, flour, let me start by uh, taking my sugar, and I have two teaspoons of sugar here to three quarters of a cup of warm water, and that's water at about 105 degrees. Put the sugar in there. This is yeast. This is one package of fast rising yeast. You can find that in the uh, store usually next to where they sell uh, bread flour. Stir that a little bit just to get the sugar mixed into the water. Now what this is going to do is it's going to activate that yeast. Once that yeast becomes active, it's also going to foam up in the water just a little bit. So that's a good way to find out whether or not your yeast is good or bad. It's called proofing your yeast. Now, I have here the one teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to put that in the flour. There's two and a half cups of flour there. And I want to sift them together. This will help make the flour a little bit lighter. It also incorporates that salt into it. Now you don't want to incorporate the salt into this bowl where you're going to do your mixing because the salt is actually put in to inhibit some of the yeast growth. So basically you're controlling the growth of the yeast and how fast it works. Alright, let's go ahead. Put a hook on this. This is a dough hook. I can see where I've got some of the um, yeast that's starting to form up in little uh, soft fluffy batches and uh, rising to the surface and that's exactly what I'm looking for. That's a very common sign that uh, you're getting exactly where you need to be. You see down in there those little lumps. Okay. Now I'm going to put in about two tablespoons of olive oil and I have been measuring this for so long I've learned how much to pour. Okay, and if it's a little over it's not going to hurt anything. If it's a little under it won't hurt anything. It does help your dough to be easier to work. It adds flavor to it and it helps some with the elasticity. There we go. This usually takes a couple of minutes. It'd be wise to give it some power first. There we go. Now we're just going to let that form up into a nice ball. And as soon as it does, we'll let you take a look at that. Also, something you might want to think about when you're making your pizza dough. If you want to do a flavored pizza dough, you can do that. You can add herbs as you're making your dough. I recommend doing that during the sifting. You can add uh, spices if you want to. Or, if you would like, you can also take your dough when you're finished making it. And before placing it in the pan, place a, a generous sum of olive oil underneath where the dough will be setting. So it sets directly in a puddle of olive oil. This really flavors the crust a great deal because as it cooks, that olive oil cooks up into the crust and it just makes it fantastic. As the machine forms this, you'll notice that it breaks up into kind of dry looking clumps. This way you can kind of understand what it's going to be like to work it by hand. Working this by hand should take you in the neighborhood of about 15 minutes.
thing's for certain. Once you have kneaded a couple of different types of dough, whether it be bread, pizza dough, or whatever, you will quickly find out the value of these machines. I want to be careful not to overwork this dough. It is going to be risen several times. Let's take a look at it. Right now I'm having the smell of yeast and dough just coming up into the air. It's absolutely wonderful. Sometimes you'll get some stuck to the, the uh, hook. Don't worry about that. Now you see how I can pull this out and the, even though it looks crumbly I can form it into a good mass. Okay, this is perfect. Now what I'm going to do is to take the bowl I had my flour in. There we go. And we're just going to take a towel, gently dust out some of that excess flour that's up in there. There we are. I'm going to place just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of this. Doesn't have to be much. And the reason I do the olive oil is as I rise this dough, it'll keep it from sticking inside of the bowl. Now, let's knead that just a little bit more. There we go. And what I'm doing is just turning it under, as you can see here, and pulling back. And now I'm going to pinch the bottom where I've turned it under, mash it down, and set it right down into your bowl. Place a bowl over this and put it in a warm location. You could also place some plastic wrap over this. You just want to keep it so that the top of the dough doesn't dry out, but it'll stay good and moist if it's covered. Also, as this rises, you want to check it about every 30 minutes, and you're going to be surprised. When this comes to about two to three times the size of this ball, when it's a large mass in here, we're going to punch it down. And I'm going to do that more than once. If you are fortunate enough to have a gas stove that has a pilot in the top of it, it will constantly produce heat. I placed a pan on this and I'm taking my bowl with the dough, placing it on that pan, and I'm taking another bowl and I'm going to invert it right on the top. That's my cover. This is ready to rise now and what it will do is capture heat from the pilot below and it will slowly warm that dough but it won't make it too hot. The top of a refrigerator works for this or also maybe a uh, wire rack above a, uh, a small oven or toaster or something like that. Or if your oven's on sometimes that will help just set it on top of your range. So there's a lot of ways you can rise this. You don't want a hot location, just warm. Around 115 degrees is best if you can get it. It has been about 30 minutes now. Uh, I am using a fast rising dough, or excuse me, a fast rising yeast in my dough. Now, if you'll notice the inside of this bowl, there is a little line where there's some moisture here. That's that moisture I was telling you about. You don't want it to get out so that this will remain uh, soft and supple without drying. This has more than doubled. And what I want to do now is to punch it down. That's literally just like so. Just press that down real good. You don't have to do any more than just pressing it flat at this point. Some people recommend kneading it. I have found that for the pizza dough, that's really not necessary. There, I pressed it down. I'm going to let it rise up again. We're going to do that a couple of times. Now, at least rise your dough twice. If you can, rise it three or four times. Each time you do that, it's going to produce a better quality dough. Okay, so just stick with it and be patient. It looks like it's about time to check our dough again. Now, again, that has risen up and it has about tripled in bulk this time. I'm going to take that out and I'm just going to start kneading it a little bit. All right, get that back down to a nice tight dough. There we go. Now, I'm going to take this and we're going to start working it on a breadboard to roll it out. I'll see you on the other side. Now working pizza dough is not a real difficult thing to do. It is helpful to have a pin and uh, you'll need a nice flat surface to work on also. Before you start you might want to add just a little bit of flour to that surface that you're going to be working on. Now here I want to take our dough and I'm just going to pinch off a small amount from one side there. There we go. 
I'm going to take this dough and roll it out into a small flat. Now how large you're going to do this will depend on the pans that you're using. In this case I'm using a very small pan and so I want my dough to be small. Now if you want a real thin crispy dough you're going to have to roll that thing out very thin. If you notice I keep adding flour. Now when you see that dough turning like that, what I'm doing is simply pressing down on one side and then the other side when I pull back. Down on the left, down on the right. And that causes that spinning action. It sometimes helps you to get a smoother dough. Now once you get this as thin as you would like it, you want to take your pan, I'm going to use a small pan right here, place it right on top of your dough. Then take a knife, a simple paring knife will do fine for this, and cut around that outer edge of that pan. All right. I got a little bit messy with this one, but it's still going to come out just fine. There we go, I'll take off that excess dough, and there's my pizza dough ready to use. I can then lay that in my pan and it's ready to be dressed up and cooked into a pizza. I'd recommend allowing this to rise just a little bit before you go ahead and put your sauce and cheese on there. Now I'm going to save this dough. Sit right there. I want to pinch off a little bit more. Now if I wanted to I could roll out a large sheet and then cut all of those from that one sheet. See there? No flour, it will stick. Okay. It's just that simple. Okay. Good luck with your pizza dough. Hope this comes out as well.